Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to finish the assembly of the bottom portion of the uh, CBX engine and we are going to install the uh, connecting rods to the crank. I'm going to leave the pistons off until we get the two cases mated back. That way I don't run the chance of damaging the pistons. Uh, so basically when the engine is back to this stage here, then we'll put the pistons on. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and, and do the connecting rods, the caps, the rod bearings, and then uh, to recap a little bit what we did in the last video, we put the rest of the transmission gears and the starter clutch together. And there were a couple of things. Uh, <laughs> in the last video, it looked like a, a washer went flying off the table in that direction. Well, uh, the way that I had edited the, the video, I had actually gone and gotten the washer and picked it back up again, and it went right here behind this nut here. So uh, no worries about losing the washer. I had a couple of people comment about that. The other thing is that in the video, I would failed to put the oil pipe in this hole here where, the, uh, where our little screen is. So it's important to have that in there when you tighten down the, the, uh, the main, the primary chain tensioner because it kind of moves around a little bit and you have to make sure that these plastic uh, uh, seals or, or plastic washers are seated properly. And so you have to have all that together, including the oil pipe, which I now have in there. So uh, you just can't forget to put that in there. Um, the other thing is uh, I'm going to install the oil nozzle. This, this is the oil nozzle here that actually lubricates the primary chain right there. And that goes in to that hole right there. So it slips in there and then, and then it bolts up there like that. There's an O-ring that goes right here in this slot. And I had removed the O-ring the, the o earlier and of course it broke because it was brittle. But then I realized that in the gasket set, they don't have that particular O-ring with it. So what I've had to resort to is to go back to the original OEM, old school, uh, outer production gasket kit, which by the way, has the gasket for the oil pump pickup tube which, as you recall in a previous video, I had to make one because, again, it wasn't in the gasket kit, but lo and behold, there it is. So I've got to pull that out of there, and I have to pull this O-ring out of there, which goes into the oil nozzle here. So this gasket, as you recall, I've got two of these. This one's already been opened anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it and get that O-ring out of there and this gasket and replace the one that I made. And another thing that you remember from, a pre from the previous video is that I, the gasket set also did not have the two O-rings that went where the oil pump mounts to. And I just had to look for a couple that worked but in that OEM, uh, in the vintage OEM gasket set, of course, it had the correct O-rings. So I went ahead and replaced those with the correct ones. So if you're doing one of these engines, you really have to order separately these two O-rings and the O-ring 
that goes on the oil nozzle, which I now has, have installed. And then if you'll notice the gasket, <laughs> I mean, there's the one that I made as opposed to the correct one. So there's no comparison. So thank goodness I had that set. So you really have to make sure you order this and the O-rings uh, separately from the gasket set. So now I've got the oil pump back installed with the correct O-rings and the correct gasket. So uh, anyway, um, back to the oil nozzle for the primary chain. I love to point out the little, the, just the little detail features that Honda does. So there's the oil galley where we have our little screen coming up from the oil pump. And this nozzle is designed to go into the hole And as you can see, as I insert it into the hole and get it positioned properly, So when it's positioned properly, as you can see there, the hole in the nozzle is right there. So when the oil is pumped up, you know, which is going in, in this direction, down in this case, because the, the case is upside down. But as the oil is pumped up through this galley, it goes into that hole and then out the nozzle on this end to lubricate the primary chain. And you wonder why Hondas last forever. Somebody also commented that this uh, main bearing had moved, had twisted up a little bit, which I was aware of that. And I have since uh, repositioned that properly uh, which is why, again, it's important that that mating surface be dry when you install the uh, main bearings and the rod bearings for that matter. So to recap what we talked about in a video a while back, on the end of the crankshaft, you've got these uh, scratch marks that were put there from the factory. And again, I'll recap this because it's really important when you go to put your uh, main and, and rod bearings in. Now, on this side of the crankshaft, there's some etchings here, and it says PL. The shop manual calls, calls these crank pins, okay? I'm calling them journals, but the, the shop manual calls them pins. So the P means pin, meaning these are the pins here. Then on this side of the crankshaft, there's some scratch marks, and they start with JL. Okay, so you have PL. Again, I don't know if you can see that. And then this side has JL, and I'm trying to focus in on it. I'm just not sure if I can pick that up. Anyway, you can just barely see it right there. It's JL, okay? And the J stands for journal. And the journals would be at the main caps. So these are the journals 
these are the pins. So when you look at your PL, which is pin, L is from the left, okay? So from the left side of the engine, which would be number one, number one cylinder, you have AAA and then BBB. So cylinder number one is A, two is A, three is A, four is B, five is B, and six is B. Then on the journals, they just have ones all the way across. All six are the number one. So then we have to go down here and we have the cylinders called out, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, one thing you have to be careful of, and I screwed up here, but when you go to paint your cases, you have to put a piece of tape here so that you don't, you don't eliminate the scratch marks that were from the factory. Now, luckily, of course, I have pictures of that if you look at the video, uh, previous video. But my scratch marks were the Roman number, uh, Roman numeral two, and all these had two. So the number one cylinder had a two, 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 and then my number seven was a three. So it was Roman numeral two and Roman numeral three. Now I can show you what I'm talking about here on this other engine. And if you'll notice, the factory scratched in the Roman numeral two, 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 two. Now this engine, they're all twos. My engine were all twos, and then number seven was a three. So now when I paint this engine, I'm going to make sure I put the tape over it. Now this engine, we're not going to tear all the way down to the bare uh, cases. So it's kind of irregardless. But for some reason or another, when I painted the, the cases on the other engine, those scratch marks disappeared. And I have a feeling they were scratched in the actual paint that was from the factory and I just uh, tried to clean off the, the paint that I put on there, but they're not there anymore. So luckily I have a picture of it though. So then when you come to your shop manual, and again, this is kind of a moot point because I've already got the main bearings in, but just so that you are, you know, just so we recall, on the side of the engine, or on the side of the crank, remember I had on, on my JL side, which is the journal side, I had all number ones etched into the uh, side of the crank. And then on the side of the engine, remember one, two, three, four, five had the Roman numeral two. So all those main bearings are green, which is correct. I have all green in there. Then on my number six journal, it was a number three Roman numeral. One is brown. So if you recall in the previous video, I had all green and then one brown. So that's it on the main uh, bearings. Then, if you look at the rod bearings, on the end of the crank, we had one, two, and three were A, four, five, and six were B. So I had A, 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 B, B, B. So then you look at the rod code, the rod ID code. And what that is, each one of the rods has a number on it. So this one has a number one. That has a number one. And that has a number one.
And then this one has a number two, and this one has a number two. Now the rod that I've replaced from the bent rod that we had, unfortunately, this rod has a number three on it. So I've got to figure out what bearing is going to have to go into this rod here. So then I go back to the shop manual and I have the rod codes here. So I have three number ones, three number twos. Now, if the rod with the number, if the rods with number one on it go on the A journal, which remember I have A, 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 B, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six. So my number one rod, if it goes on the A's, has a yellow bearing. Then if, if the number two rod goes on the A journal, it's green. If it goes on B, it's brown. If number one goes on B, then I have to use a green one. So basically all my rods are yellow or green. Now, if you have a number three rod, which now I do, if it goes on A, it's a brown bearing. If it goes on B, it's black. Now, I only have yellow, green, and brown bearings. So here's my brown. There's my yellow, which is kind of hard to see. And here are my green ones. So basically, I have to make sure that the brown bearing definitely goes on this number three rod. And then depending on where I put these, the number twos or the number ones, they'll take either green or yellow. So now it's, it's a bit tricky, but in my case, I've only got two sets of yellow, I had two sets of brown, and I have two sets of green. So I have to, I have to coordinate this properly. Now on my new rod that is replacing the bent one, I have a number three. I have two sets of brown, so I've got to use a set of brown on that rod and because and, I don't have any black. So that rod cannot go on journal B. It has to go on one of the A's. So I'm going to use that on either a cylinder number one, two, or three, because then I can use a brown. And then I can use a brown, my second set of brown, on a number two rod, which I have right here. Then I have two sets of yellow and two sets of green, which will go on the remaining rods. Because I can use the green either on an A or a B, and I can only use a yellow on an A. So... In other words, my number one cylinder is going to have to have that number three rod, and two and three are going to have to be number ones with the yellow, and then four or five are green, and six is going to be brown. So it's a little confusing, and it'll drive you crazy, but once you get it, it works pretty good. So just like on the main bearings, you have to make sure that this surface right here is really clean and very, very dry because you do not want, want these bearings to slip. So there's a little hole in the bearing, as you can see there, and a, and a uh, notch. So there's a notch in the rod, and you go ahead and line up the holes, and then again, you just press the bearing in just like that and then make sure that they're lined up on the on the edge
just like that. It's important that hole is lined up. Then on the cap, obviously the notch just lines up. There's no other way it can go in. So again, you make sure this is nice and clean and dry. Don't worry about all the scuff marks. It's unimportant. And then just squeeze it in there. And that's it. And then when you put them back together again, you have to make sure that the number two lines up or the number one or whichever you have. So now once you get all of your rod bearings in, you can go ahead, I go ahead and just install them on the, on, you know, in the position where they're going to go. And I just kind of let them lay there loosely. I just barely turn the, uh, the nut on the top because I'm going to go check them all with the plastic gauge. But I go ahead and put them in place so that I don't get them mixed up as far as where they go. Now, one thing you have to remember is that on each one of the rods, there's a hole on one side. See, there's no hole here, and there's a hole on this side. That hole goes towards the back of the engine. So in this case, this is the, the front of the engine. The back is over there, so I want to flip this around. Now, one of the, the other way that I do it is, you know, the corresponding number, which in this case is number one, goes towards the front. So hole in the back, number in the front. Oh, and then the other thing is you want to make sure that the journal is nice and dry, and this is dry, because you're going to use plastic gauge on it, and you need to have a dry surface for that. So again, I just get the nut turned to start so that the rod doesn't fall out. And then I leave it until I'm ready to use the plastic gauge. So again, just make sure that the hole is towards the back of the engine. So that's going to be it for this video. I've got the, uh, the rods all ready to go to use plastic gauge, and I'm going to go ahead and do the plastic gauge and get them uh, torqued down to specs. Uh, I'm not going to go through the plastic gauge again. Uh, I did that on a previous video, but I would be doing the plastic gauge on the uh, rod bearings and then you're also supposed to take the upper case and bolt it down and, and check the plastic gauge on that, but I'm probably going to skip that, that uh, step. I don't really see a whole lot of uh, reason to do that. Everything looked in pretty good condition. It didn't look worn or anything like that, so I'm sure it's well within spec. But the rod, the rod bearings are important because, I mean, those are, those are bearings that you replace. So if they're not in spec, then I'm going to have to use a different bearing to get it in spec. So that's kind of a long and tedious process. But again, I showed how to do that on a previous video. And uh, so I'm going to be doing that and getting these all set to go. And then we can go ahead and put the upper or the lower case back on this and flip the engine over and install the pistons on the next video. And once the pistons are in, then I can go ahead and put in the cylinders and the head, and then this engine is going to be almost complete at that point. So uh, anyway, I probably will not have that video until the beginning of next week. 
I've got an open house here at my shop this weekend and I'm going to be busy with that. So probably Monday or Tuesday I will have the video installing the pistons, the cylinder, and the head. So look forward to that and thank you for watching. And again, as always, please subscribe and then hit the, hit the bell for uh, notification of future videos. I really appreciate uh, the watching and like and share. And uh, I invite all comments as well. So uh, again, thank you for watching.